Good morning, mighty man. It's so awesome to be here. I thank God for this honor and this privilege to meet also some of my new family members. <laughs> um, it's just, it's been such a wonderful time. Ever, from the moment that Brother Dan uh, invited me to come out and said, would you come out? I just, I just felt I, I need to be there. I need to share. And like he said, I, I really haven't had an opportunity to, to share my testimony at our church. A lot of people do know um, some of my testimony and where God has brought me from. Um, and, uh, but I'm just glad to be here to be shared with you. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Uh, and all, um, he's not in here. Brother Joe. Je Joe? Oh, no. <laughs> Brother Skip, who um, kind of coordinated all this and was able to get me set up in here. And, and I, I consider it an honor and a privilege uh, to be here and, and doing this and be able to worship. I want to do something different. I just felt from the Holy Spirit to do it this way. I want to share my testimony. And because um, my testimony is, um, you, you'll hear um, in the songs that God has given me, the, the breakthrough part of it, where God has brought me from. I mean, most of these songs came from, from, time, from dark times in my, in, my, in my life. But out of that, God... Uh, was able to squeeze something precious and good. And some songs came out of that, and I was able to worship and praise them in the midst of those dark seasons. How many have been through some dark seasons? <laughs> yeah, they, they come. Trust me, the Bible says that, you know, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But rejoice, because I have overcome the world. And that, that's the great thing that he has already overcome. Um, I just want to brief, brief, briefly just start. I don't want to... Um, if I share everything, we'd be here till, till <laughs> tonight, and I don't want to keep you guys long, but just want to share, share with you the gist of what, just even in the scripture that Brother Dan shared, um, there's some dark seasons, but there's, there's a moment where, where you know, um, weeping may endure for a night, but the, the Bible says that joy comes when? There's a morning season, and I don't know where you are at right now, you may be in that dark season, but just know that Morning's coming. It's coming, and you, you'll be able to sing praises. But I encourage you to, to, to worship him even in the night season. Because you'll see his hand move even in the night season. Amen. Um, I'm a PK. For those of you who don't know what that is, I'm a preacher's kid. Um, my dad was one of the first Latino pastors in this area, in, a, in Estero, Florida. Um, didn't speak a lick of, Span of English. And teamed up with a gentleman named Frank Quinn, and they um, and Frank Quinn learned Spanish, and my dad learned English from Brother Frank. And um, they would go to the migrant camps and uh, and show movies, and my dad would preach in Spanish. And it was an amazing time. I remember as a, a young boy going to these migrant camps and and um, with my dad and helping him set up the chairs. Uh, grew up in a very religious environment. Um, Pentecostal and you know everything was a sin <laughs> couldn't play baseball I wanted to be a boxer couldn't do that my mom says no way you know that's can't hurt our fellow brothers <laughs> um, but uh, years went by and um, just that religious spirit just kind of just put a really bad taste in my mouth and um, I didn't I was I knew there was a calling in my life because I would hear from my mother every day the Lord called you from my womb and she told me to call to name you Daniel and I have a younger brother and his name is Samuel she was um, God gave me those names for both of you and um, I didn't know what that meant calling <laughs> um, ministry I had n none of that in mind I didn't as a young boy I heard it all my life I didn't didn't know what that was but I know that I ran far from it because it had the, the, the look of religion. There was no relationship. Um, I do remember as a young boy at the age of uh, six, um, I, ma I had made a decision or confession. I confessed Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. And, and I, um, I remember wanting to be like my dad. I would see him preach and yell from the stage. And I, I want to do that. <laughs> As a little boy, I remember saying that. And, and I think at the age of six, I, did, I, I remember I, I did 
preach a message. And that, that night, um, you know, I had my mom, she had me suit up. I said, I want to look just like dad, the tie and everything, the suit. And um, I preached. And that, and that night, I believe uh, God used me and souls came to the Lord that night at, at that age. But as years went by, I grew up teenage years and um, just started rebelling, as most PKs do. There was no youth groups back then, no children's church. You know, my brother, I was sharing with one of the brothers as punishment. My brother and I, when we were young, we would get, uh, our punishment was to go kneel at the altar and pray while my, while my dad was preaching. And we knew we would get in trouble because, you know, that was that, like public shaming. <laughs> Here's the pastor's kids. They're, they're being so bad that they have to go to the altar and pray. And, um, but and even in those times, we would feel, experience the love of our father. That, you know, we'd fall asleep in the altar and wake up in our beds, in our pajamas. How we get here? Um, but as years went by, I... Um, after high school, I joined the Marine Corps, and that, that was my out. Um, and I wanted to experience the world and do everything that the world does. And I didn't want nothing to do with church, with, with uh, going to church, with reading the Bible. Um, and so I dove into everything that was of the world and evil, and just, I did it all. Even as a Marine, I, I, I graduated top of my class out of boot camp, was the honor man. Um, I went to combat engineer school, graduated at the top of that, and I had every intentions of making it a career, but God had other plans, because in the midst of me running, God has been chasing me, <laughs> chasing me. Yes, God's chasing you. God's chasing someone, even in this room. Yeah, he knows our name. He knows the hairs on our head. Everything about us, our, our discrepancies, our, our lows and our highs. But it got to the point where I ran and ran and I ran and I ran. Um, and once I got out of um, the Marine Corps, served in four years, uh, really got a bad taste of the Marine Corps of that. I just wanted to get, I hadn't seen my family in three years, served in Desert Storm. And things were changing in the Marine Corps, so I said, I think this, I'm, I might as well just get out. But I know it was kind of God just shifting my thinking and just uh, redirecting my path. Uh, I got out, came home for a week, and I said, I can't take being home because everyone's talking to me about Jesus. Even my younger brother, who had just recently given his heart to the Lord, um, he had joined the Marine Corps as well and wanted to follow my footstep, but dislocated his shoulder in boot camp and was um, medically discharged and uh, so he was home and just said Daniel you know you got to change your ways you know God loves you and you know we were brought up in this the things of the Lord and God has a plan for you and you know and I'm, I'm not ready I'm not ready and I just kept running and the farther I ran the more God chased me <laughs> I remember being in some of the darkest places and with some of the shadiest people and out of nowhere someone just started talking about Jesus. <laughs> and I know he was there at most of the time. Most of the time I just would ignore it. I mean, the drinking got, went to drugs. When I w left, when I was home that week and I left and I went back to Yuma, Arizona where I was last duty station. California and just got involved with the wrong people. Um, went from doing drugs to selling drugs. And one, of the, one of the most popular drugs, or oh, the popular drug back then that was just coming out, which was crystal meth. And was connected with some producers of it and was distributed and going back and forth to California. Just some dark and ugly things. Then I get a phone call from my brother, and he says, um, Hey, how you doing? We haven't talked in a while, but uh, I just want to let you know I'm getting married. This was in 1991. Actually, 92, I'm sorry. And um, he says, I'm getting married in August, and I want you to be my best man. 
And I love my, my younger brother, which I now call my older brother. Because since he came to the Lord first, I called him my older spiritual brother. And I look up to him. <laughs> We're three years apart. And um, so I said, of course, I'll be your best man. Um, and then when I said, yes, I, I'm coming, uh, I guess the enemy just kind of just uh, came against me in so many ways. Um, um, all hell broke loose. And it, he tried to make it so difficult for me to, to get back home. Friends who I thought were friends were truly enemies. And I saw, you know, actually the face of the enemy just he was mocking me and laughing me and I remember in a in a drunken stupor and even high off of uh, crystal meth I was so paranoid and I could hear the demonic uh, uh, things just laughing outside of the window and and just I knew he wanted to he was trying to take me out didn't want me to make it back to Florida to my brother's wedding and um, I called my sister and she says, and I told her, I said, you know, I went from having thousands and thousands of dollars in my pocket, or in my wallet at, at any given time, to having nothing. And I didn't have no money to even buy a ticket to get back home. And I called my sister and she says, and I said, would you send me the money? And in her wisdom, she says, no, I'm not sending you any money. I'm buying your plane ticket. <laughs> and you just be on that plane. And even on the way here in the plane, I, things happen. I, I, I miss uh, my connecting flight, and, um, and I still had drugs on me, and it was just crazy. I, but God is so good. Even on, uh, since I missed my flight, they put me on a first-class uh, seat, flying in from Cleveland into Fort Myers. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, cool. I got to Fort Myers an hour before my brother's wedding. My dad and mom picked me up at the airport. And still, in my own ways, in my own thinking, didn't want nothing to do with Jesus, still running from the call. I had my last little bag of crystal meth, and I did that in the bathroom while I was getting ready, putting it on my tux. So at my brother's wedding, I was under the influence and just just continued in my ways for months and months and, um, and as I shared with my brother earlier um, I woke up one morning in my, in, in my driveway my, my parents home in the driveway in, uh, in their car I remember it was a red Toyota Tercel <laughs> didn't know how I got there and um, woke up and was like wow what am I doing here and, and how did I get here had a pack of cigarettes in one hand and a real real big cell phone remember <laughs> cell phones were so small now we get back then you guys remember those real big cell phone, military cell phone? yeah <laughs> G.I. Joe's had one of those in the other hand and as I was coming to and like trying to regroup, and, you know, how did I get here? Just started hearing the voice of the enemy whisper in my ear. You're no good. You're worth nothing. You're a disgrace to your family. But you'll never amount to anything. Why don't you just take your life? Why don't you just kill yourself? And I kept on hearing that voice and I'm and it got louder as I tried to drown it out and and I started paying attention and listening to that voice to the point that I got out of the car and went inside and sat on the couch and just started contemplating how am I going to do it how am I going to end this this voice is right I'm, I'm going to disgrace my, to my family I mean, I'm giving you the condensed verses because so many things even happened to me in, in, while I was in the military. That, But I had a praying mother, that's for sure. She was a prayer warrior. <laughs> I mean, many times I could have ended 
ended up dead or locked up in jail and I know that the hand of God was with me even though I was running so as I was, con- I was sitting on the couch contemplating how to take my life my brother who at the time you know, um, just recently married was took on a job for UPS uh, and um one of their seasonal drivers and he normally didn't get home till late at night you know they, they drop off their last package it was usually late at night that he got home but here it is somewhere around 10 or 11 in the morning and as I'm contemplating how to take my life deep down in my heart there was a heart cry saying Lord I need you I need your help I need you. I need your help. But at the same time, this voice kept on getting louder and louder. You're disgraced. Take your life. You'll never amount to anything. You're worthless. All lies. Because he's (laughs) a liar and the father of lies. There's no truth in him at all. (laughs) So as I'm crying in my heart for help, in walks my brother full of the Holy Ghost (laughs) and he says to me as soon as he walked in the door I was surprised just that he was even home and he says these words to me and before he could even say the words I started crying because I knew help had come I knew my help had come walking through those doors my help had come when he walked in after I was done crying and just bawling out all over him he said my brother the Holy Spirit told me to tell you you've never been alone you've never been alone and that's all I needed to hear and when I heard those words is this weight just fell off my shoulders and I was able to hear and see clearly at that moment and know that the love of God had been chasing me all this time and that he had been there even when I turned my back on him he was there loving me calling me and right there my brother asked me do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and I said brother you know it I do I need him I want him still clenching onto that pack of cigarettes that I had in my hand got up after he we prayed together went to the garbage can and just I said in the name of Jesus I'll never smoke another cigarette again I mean I was a three pack a day smoke that's uh. this was in 1992 and shortly after that after I my brother hugging and crying and we went into my my dad's room who was still sleeping and told him the news and my brother said your prodigal son is home has returned (laughs) and he started crying and he says you don't know how much we've been praying for you my mom got home later that afternoon um, and she just started to share with me and she says and that things that I didn't know She says, you don't know how many times in all this time that you've been away, the Holy Spirit would wake me up at all nights, all times of the night just to pray for you and just to thank Him for you because He gave me to you. For the, uh, when I was in my mother's womb, she would tell me that, they, everyone thought she, I was going to be a girl after having five. I'm the uh, second youngest of seven. There's five older sisters. Myself and then my younger brother. So after five girls, they were like, okay, she's having another girl. <laughs> she says she, uh, one night she was praying and she heard this yell from her womb. She said that I yelled. 
I let out a yell in her womb. And she said at that moment, the Lord told her, it's a boy. His name shall be Daniel. And she would always tell me that story. But that night, that, that evening, when my mom got home, she was telling me, yes, the Lord would wake me up at all nights of the hour, all hours of the night to pray for you. I'm sorry. And I started realizing that some of those dark times that I was in, in those shady places and doing the wrong things and places where I could have been shot, killed, or end up arrested or in jail, that those are the times that I know she was up praying for me. And God's hand was all over me even then. And his love was with me even then. Then shortly after, you know, I, I just dove into all that was God. I just wanted to be in his presence. I just wanted to be... Um, always been musically inclined on the drums I never had never, like I shared with my brother uh, when my dad was pastoring in Estero in my early high school years in my f like freshman year or sophomore year I'm sorry uh, there was an old upright piano in the church that, and I used to fiddle around with it never had any lessons and, but that desire to play had always been with me and even um especially after I had received the Lord as my Savior and, and I wanted to do, I just wanted to worship Him. And immediately got involved in, in the, with the worship team. I still didn't know my way around the keyboard, didn't know what note was what, and didn't sing at all, didn't want to, wasn't aspiring to be a worship leader or anything, just wanted to be in the house of the Lord. And um, I served in any, any area. I would clean toilets. I helped the church uh, put fans up. <laughs> Just wanted to do it all. And little by little, the Lord just started just his grace upon me just to learn more of the keyboard. And little by little, he kept on pushing me forward. And like a, a scared little boy, I would always hide behind my daddy's. <laughs> and... Daddy God would just push me forward, says, no, son, come on, don't be ashamed, I'm with you. You're going to tell many what I've done for you. And what I've done for you, I can do for them, I can do for many. There's, there's no respect of persons. I'm, my love is for everyone. And my passion just for worship grew more and more. Uh, after some years just um, serving in the church and uh, faithfully there came a season where in early 2000 well 1999 we had gotten the news that my mother was they found a lump in, uh, in her breast and they did a biopsy and uh they found out it was cancer. And, um, you know, we, as a family, we all came together and just were believing for a miracle for her to be healed. And five months later, she went home to be with the Lord. That was in 2000. And then 2002, the youngest of the girls, my sister Susanna, they had found a lump in her breast as well. And um, it was malignant as well. And she went through all the chemotherapy and stuff. And she wanted, she had just had a little girl at the time, my niece Ivana. And um, about a year, a year later, my sister Susanna went home to be with the Lord. At this point, my family, we're wondering, Lord, what's going on? And I had so many questions. I wasn't doubting God. I wasn't. I knew he's our healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. I, I knew that. I knew that. 
but I still had questions. Then in 2004, which was a just a transition year for me, we had um, we were by this time we were now where I'm at now in Faith Fellowship. Um, before I was serving in a, in a Latino church in Fort Myers called uh, Rosa de Saron, Rose of Sharon. I was there for 10 years and we just God shifted us out of there and we found Faith Fellowship where I'm at now. And we had plugged in and I just wanted to be low key and you know, I didn't want to do much but God kept on knowing, you're here to serve, you're here to serve. So I got became part of the worship team, was playing bass at the time. And I'm saying, I'm not, that's all I'm going to do. Lord. That's all I'm going to do. I don't want to do anything else. I'll play the bass and I'll be faithful here and that's it. So in 2004, um, after working, I was working at a medical field at a doctor's office actually here in Cape Coral in Del Prado. And um, been there 10 years and I just felt my season there was over and we had a, a Bible school at our, at our church at the time and I just kept on feeling in my heart my spirit that I need to go to, to Bible school and so I stepped out in faith and I said you know Lord I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this so I went to my boss and told him that I was quitting. They didn't want me to leave. They tried to do whatever possible to keep me to stay in more money and all this. But I just, I just felt Lord calling me to that, to Bible school. So after 10 years, I quit that job and just stepped out in faith. I was the only one working at home. My wife wasn't working at the time. And that was in April of 2004. And uh, uh, wow. So I quit, and I'm, I'm in Bible school, and um, right in the middle of Bible school. Prior to that, the, the year before, my dad had been diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. And he looked good. I mean, we, we believe he was going to beat it. He was, um, but my dad, this old school, Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> he didn't want any medication. He didn't want anything. He's, he believed God was going to heal him. But in 2004, I remember I was in Bible school and I got a call. And it said, Daniel, come to the hospital. They're going to take your dad over to Hope Hospice where he could spend his days. We don't think he's going to make it. And so they had rushed him already to Hope Hospice. We got there, all my sisters were there, and my brother-in-law, and, and that day my dad went home to be with the Lord. Now this is when I'm really saying, God, where are you? Who am I? Why does all this happen to my family? A six year period, and my mom, my sister, and then now my dad. And um, this is what came out of my spirit. I can, all I could do was worship. And I remember um, I went into one of the rooms at the church and I just raised my hand and, and I just started calling on God and, ask, and just saying, Lord, who am I? What, what am I doing here? I wasn't questioning why it, this happened but it's just, I wanted to know, Lord, who am I to you? What, what am I supposed to do? And this song came, and I just want to share it with you. They'll have the words up there, but, um, you know, we jump and shout, and I love to praise God, but I'm a worshiper. I love to be on my face. I, I find that's where my strength comes from. He is my strength, but just worshiping him. And, and even in the darkest times, you know, just calling on him. And it goes just like this. Lord, I come to you today. You're my potter, I'm your clay. 
as I lay here on your wheel, I'm yours, Lord, be your way. Lord, I stand here faithfully as your fingers run through me. I'm created to worship you, and that's all I want to do. Lord, I will be a vessel of worship. Lord, I will be a vessel of grace just pour in me all that I need to bring glory to your name Lord I come today before you worship you and say touch me have your way I'm your clay Lord I'm here to let you know I don't ever want to let you go in your presence I'm on my face I find stillness in your secret place Lord I lay here faithfully as your fire burns through me you've placed me by your throne to worship worship you alone Lord I will be a vessel of worship Just pour in me all that I need to bring glory to your name. Lord, I come today before you to worship you and say, Touch me, have your way. Touch me, have your way. Lord, won't you touch me? Have your way. I'm your clay. Come on, sing with me, say, Lord, I will be. A vessel of worship, Lord, I will be a vessel of grace. Just pour in me, just pour in me. Oh, to bring glory to your 
name Lord I come today before you to worship you and say Lord touch me touch me have your way touch me have your way Lord won't you touch me have your way I'm your clay and I've just realized I'm just a lump of clay After all that darkness, all that pain, and just having the love of Jesus, the love of our Father surround me and cover me, even though I ran and turned my back on him, and I came to the conclusion, yes, I'm, I'm your clay, Lord. That's my little moniker I sign that I'm, I'm, I'm your clay. His clay is what I call it. I, I write wherever... I sign off and if you ever get an email from me, Daniel, his clay. <laughs> and I've, I've shared this many times before. Um, I know um, the scripture talks about the, 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 the clay, uh, the potter, being in the, on the potter's wheel and, you know, how, um, and we know the process of, 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 of that, the, what the potter does with the clay after, the, after it's molded. You know, it has. You know, it goes through the fire. Sometimes it has to come back and you know, get all the bubbles out and come back to the to the wheel. And but once the process is all done, you know, it, it's a vessel that's that's ready to be used, right? And um, and I know that's where God has had me. You know, for many years, and He's been doing great things in my life. Um, I'm married. Uh, married. Uh, We'll be celebrating, I think, yeah, our 20th next year. Um, three beautiful children. And yes, I'm a granddaddy. Got three beautiful grandchildren. I don't know I don't look like it, but I do. have a 15-year-old and two little four-year-olds that are running me ragged now. I'm just kidding. I love them. But um, uh, through all that, um, I have always said that I love to be on the potter's wheel. You know, it's good to be the vessel and being used and being... But I remember Israel Houghton, he was sharing a uh, testimony about how when he started... I don't know if you many know who... Do you know who Israel Houghton is? He wrote, I'm a friend of God and many other songs. But he's... Um, he shared this testimony on how where he started um, um, playing the piano and how he started as a worship leader, period. It was not a good thing. It was, he fumbled through the songs. He only knew three, two songs. And, but he remembered, he said, Lord, if you really want to use me, he says, you know, he, he would go, he would pull, push his, his piano, his mother's piano into the kitchen because it got, good, it, I guess, got good, good acoustics in the kitchen and he would push it there and then he'd set up cups on top of the piano and those were the his that was his con the congregation the worshipers and he, he would worship to the cups but he would sit there for hours and just worship the lord and and then he says he misses those moments cuz yeah he's been all over the world and traveled and concerts here and the stages and a lot of people are aspiring to be on the stage where he just wanted to go back to the kitchen in those precious moments where you truly spend time with God, where it's just you and Him, and um, some of those, my 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 kitchen just happened to be in, an, in a cleaning room in an endoscopy surgery center, <laughs> where I would just spend hours cleaning some scopes, but worshiping at the same time. And then when I'd get home and on my little keyboard, I'd spend time worshiping. But I've always said I wanted to be on the potter's wheel, because on the potter's wheel. The hands of the potter are always on you. 
That's where I want to be. With his hands always on me. His touch. His grace. His favor. His anointing. Just like that says. <laughs> it's not by our power or might, but by the spirit of the Lord. And um, more songs just came, keep, keep coming forth and springing out of my spirit. And this is one that, um, if you want, I mean, you feel free to stand and worship. But this is one that just says simply, I stand in awe of you. 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 Come on, sing that. I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. Because you're beautiful. Your presence makes me brand new when I worship you my Jesus all the darkness turns to light you are awesome and glorious for your blood I am victorious Yes. 
so beautiful, my Jesus. You are blessed and holy, awesome and glorious. You are so beautiful, my Jesus. You are blessed and holy, awesome and glorious. You are so beautiful, my Jesus. That's why I stand, that's why I stand, I stand in all of you. That's why I stand, that's why I stand, that's why I stand, I stand in all. He's good. He's so good. So good to me.
Father, you are so good to me. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Because you're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. faithful. God's been true and ever-present help in time of trouble. Always there. Always faithful. And um, I'm so thankful for this opportunity to be able to just share with you what God has done in my life and what he's brought me out of and where he has me today. And I know there's even greater. You got to expect greater. Amen. Someone say the best is yet to come. Don't focus on where you are right now, because there's change coming. <laughs> there's a new day. God's got some great things planned for each and every one of us. And in this, the, I know we're nearing the end of this year, 2015. And God will be faithful to the end. There's, he's he's going to show up even to the end. So uh, there's something great about to happen. And declare this. I declare this all the time. It says, something good. Come, is about to happen in my life. I say that every day. Something good is about to happen in my life. Amen. Be encouraged, mighty men of God. Thank you for having me this morning. I, I, is my time up? I mean, I don't want to overextend my stay. <laughs> but um, uh, actually, before we go, can we worship? Can we sing one more song? Just one more song. I, I, I. I had this song in my spirit, and I just, I, I gotta, it's a song that, hallelujah, yes. I just want to, sh I, I want to share it with you guys. It's a song that the Lord gave myself and this young lady named Tara Lindbergh. She's, her and her husband are youth pastors in Indiana right now. Um, they were in, in New Jersey. But it's a song called Fit for a King. And, um, it would take me forever to go into the story of how this song came about, but just 
Just listen to this. Worship fit for a king, our hearts open. We give you everything and we bless your name. For you are great, your beauty takes my breath away. Your wonders are always on display, and we bless your name. For you are great, you are my king, and there's no one like you, worthy of all of my praise. You stand alone, and there's none above you. Reigning forever in majesty. From my heart will flow every drop of your love that causes my lips to sing and tell the wonders of your grace.
in majesty, Jesus, Jesus.